Uh, I did an episode recently on testosterone levels dropping in men uh, c consistently over time. And I know that I saw a post you did recently where you talked about the sort of connection between what's happening in our environment and these testosterone levels continuing to drop in men and the infertility rates we're seeing in both men and women. Uh, would, would you share your thoughts on what you believe kind of part of what the root cause of those issues are? Yeah, thank you. Um, the background here that we've got is about a 40, 50 year, you know, demonstration of the phenomenon of life within soil systems or biodiversity and its relationship to human biology. And so we began an all out kind of genocide on the planet in the 1970s when chemical agriculture really came of age around uh, the advent of glyphosate, which is a organophosphate that is a sister molecule to Agent Orange, which was used obviously to kill the jungles of Vietnam and North Korea, uh, North, Northern, uh, North Vietnam, Cambodia during the Vietnam conflict 25 years long. And so we kind of repurposed chemical warfare to be a weed killer, you know, for our food industry in the 1970s. And with that, we inadvertently began to poison our water systems and the air we breathe, the rain that falls, etc., with the farm runoff uh, of these organophosphates. And by the 1980s, the, the chemicals were approved for uh, consumer use. And so uh, every backyard garden and every driveway was starting to be sprayed down with Roundup, which is the most common uh, delivery system for this glyphosate molecule. And that molecule functions as an antibiotic in the environment. It kills bacteria, fungi, protozoa, parasites, the whole thing. So it's been patented many times as an antimicrobial um, but it was also uh, you know, understood to lock up key nutrients uh, and block the pathways of, of, of protein synthesis at the cellular level. And so in the original patents from Monsanto, you can read you know, the specific enzyme pathway, the shikimate pathway that's blocked by this chemical. And therefore, the bacteria within our soil systems and the, and the plants that grow in them can no longer make the essential amino acids. And so we have the you know, simultaneous advent of an antibiotic and a protein synthesis defect within nature starting in the 1970s. 76 was kind of the beginning of the large scale use of it. By 1980s, you'll recall Nancy Reagan, you know, announcing that we needed a war on obesity. And so we saw this obesity epidemic really uh, get a hold in the mid 1980s. And that was the first sign that we had done something catastrophic to human biology. And if you drill down on metabolism or the cause of obesity within a diverse population like the United States, you quickly get to the mitochondria. And the mitochondria are these tiny little guys that live inside human cells that are specialized bacteria. And so when we put an antibiotic into the water system and it's consolidated in the human body, the most sensitive kind of bellwether of change is the those mitochondria starting to fail in their metabolism. And so my laboratory of the last 10 years has been really specifically working on the effects of glyphosate on mitochondrial metabolism and the solar, the cellular polarization or the ability of nutrients and water to move across uh, systems. And so that, or across organ systems, so absorbing nutrients from gut to vascular system, from your vascular cell system to the cells themselves. Those things are all broken by glyphosate as well. And so there you've got multiple levels of, of defects that were set up. As you look at that phenomenon of a dropping energy level within a population, obesity is only the first symptom. And then a few years after that, as you accumulate fat within the liver, a condition called fatty liver, you start to get that pre-diabetes and diabetes phenomenon that by the 1990s was you know, really raging through the environment of the United States and other Western cultures that had adopted our agricultural system. Tail end of, of that, with that chronic inflammation, the gut lining and the like, you end up with autoimmune disease. And so by the mid 1990s into the mid 2000s, that decade was really the harbinger of a really big new crisis, which was gluten sensitivity, gluten allergies, um, full on autoimmune disease due to gluten, which would be called celiac disease. And then, of course, the thyroid conditions coming after that. And by the time 2006 rolls around, we've got one in four 
girls by the age of 12 with antibodies to her thyroid gland in the United States. And so this advent of autoimmunity, you fast forward another 10 years and you un uncover the neurologic conditions, autism, al Alzheimer's, Parkinson's really accelerating from 2006 to 2016 in a dramatic way. And then, of course, the cancer epidemic behind the neurologic system, uh, leukemias, lymphomas, bladder cancer, liver cancer, thyroid cancer, all of them going, you know, hockey sticking throughout the, the 2010, 2020 range. And then on the tail end of, of that decade, you see the collapse of uh, fertility and gender identity and the the failure of both fertility and gender have to do with the way in which the body regulates uh, hormonal expression testosterone in males, estrogen in women, based on the stress level or metabolism, metabolic capacity of that organism. As metabolism falls to a certain you know, threshold, the body switches off fertility, which is an you know, important protective mechanism. If you don't have enough energy to heal yourself, you certainly don't want to put the energy into offspring. You don't want to have a bunch of babies in, in a famine, for example. So when there's prolonged energetic stress on any organism, it's going to decrease its fertility naturally. On top of that is then the poisoning of, of sperm, ovum, and the rest by the chemical agricultural system. And so it's this bilayer of chemical disruption of protein synthesis that allows sperm to be motile all the way down to you know other deeper issues that you would find uh, in the environment with you know the, the microplastics and the like disrupting the endocrine system further so metabolic stress environmental stress psychosocial stressors layered on top and you end up with this collapse of of vitality within the gendered you know system of of the male axis of testosterone the female axis of estrogen and that is a crossing so when you put those two you know, genders under the same stress, estrogen goes down in women, they start overproducing testosterone, which causes polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is the most common mm -hmm. endocrine reason for infertility in a woman. And then, you know, counterpart, the male drops testosterone and starts converting it to estrogen. And that leads to that decreased, you know, gonadotrophic, you know, formation of, of motile sperm. And you get decreased muscle mass, decreased expression of the whole male you know, phenotype and all that. So that's kind of our last 40 or 50 years, which is all related to this drop of metabolism due to the widespread use of antibiotics in our food and water systems. Mm -hmm.